Hey everyone, welcome to a quick tech spotlight. Today I have the Sony SRS150 Active Speaker System. These are just some bookshelf speakers at first glance, but you're probably thinking, what's so special about these? Well, they offer a couple characteristics that are really unique that I have never seen in any bookshelf speaker. Well, actually, probably any speaker. And I, look, I tried to find some that are similar. Uh, other brands and stuff or modern day equivalents and there is nothing out there even high-end speakers like audio engines and stuff they don't offer some of the features that these bad boys do um this one's missing a couple of the um the felt feet but um other than that they're in really good shape so anyways real quick i just wanted to comment on the aesthetics of them they are they are like totally unique in terms of bookshelf speakers you know most bookshelf speakers from this, this time frame till even nowadays is basically just a black box or uh, you know a wooden box with a fabric mesh over the speaker part and you know your inputs and outputs in the back or whatever but these these are pretty unique the the bottom here has this kind of dark chrome uh, kind of a dark chrome it's not like a it's not like a shiny like typical um, chrome color it's actually kind of like a smoked uh, effect finish on it it's really cool and it doesn't have a, a fabric mesh over the speaker it's got this um, black wire metal mesh which is pretty cool and unique and then inside if you take the screen off it's got this stainless uh, ring around the actual speaker part which is really cool and just the whole overall design is just really unique and totally late 80s um, there's no mistaking that these are these aren't your typical bookshelf speakers so let's get around to the back and I'll show you what they can really do. All right, so looking around the back, first thing I notice is made in Japan, which is a common giveaway that it's a higher quality than some of the other stuff that Sony makes um, from other countries. Um, but going on from there, it's got these wall mounts right here. Apparently uh, in the instruction manual, it actually came with mounting screws and everything, which is pretty cool. So what you have right here is your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which um, here it is right here. It has this threaded end. It's kind of hard to see. Originally, it came with um, a larger, I don't know the exact size, but the, the larger headphone jack that, you know, plugs into, like, more serious stuff. And then also it has this little tie wrap thing around the cord with the, with the same threading on it. So you can take, you can take the, the bigger end off screw it on here and it's out of the way and you can use this which I, is pretty cool man they thought of everything with this and then this cord obviously is the um goes to the wall and then this one right here dc input 12 volt i was like well what do you need that for when you have a one that goes into the wall well apparently sony sold an adapter that lets you hook up um like a car battery to these so like, so I guess if you're like at the beach or something, like hanging out and you want to listen to some tunes, you can, you know, get your adapter out and hook it up to your car battery and you got, you got like, you know, tunes you can listen to while you're hanging out with your friends or whatever. I don't know. It was a different time back then. You know what I mean? Nowadays you just get a Bluetooth speaker and you Bluetooth it to your phone and play some Spotify or whatever. But back in the day you had to do things differently. So anyways... So in order to transmit sound data from the left speaker to the right speaker, you hook it up with speaker wire into these terminals, boom, boom. That's kind of weird. I mean, it's not completely out of, out of control, but, um, and, and then, um, so you're probably thinking like, okay, so what else is new? Well, this speaker system is both active, plugs into the wall, and amplifies your sound, plays it through the speakers, so it's active, but it's also passive you can undo these thumb screws right here i'm not going to do it right now but let me get a closer look for you you undo these thumb screws you take off this metal plate here and you flip this switch you can't flip it now because it's locked so you flip the switch over so it allows you to um you flip the plate over so it allows you to flip this switch and then essentially you take your you know so they're passive speakers so you you it would run your speaker wire from these terminals to your amplifier or to your uh, receiver. And the same with the right channel. I've never seen another set of speakers like that. I looked all over the place and I'm sure there is, 
maybe Sony made another set too, but this is pretty cool. So essentially what Sony was doing was they were making, trying to make the last set of books of speakers that you'll ever need um, because you can use them on the go. You can use them with your portable devices like your Walkman or your Discman. They actually did mention the Discman in the uh, instructions in the, um, the user guide. So that was around. So this was definitely at least late 80s. Um, but uh, yeah, and then you take it home, you get a nice uh, receiver, stereo receiver. You can hook these up and they're good to go. The sound quality is great. Let me show you uh, some um, footage of listening to some music through these. And then that's about it really. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that Sony thought of everything. Well, if you're like super meticulous, right? And you're like, well, what if you wanted to set your speakers on the side and listen, you know, because they won't fit vertically. So I need to lay them down horizontally, horizontally. Um, <laughs> so what, what do you do? You know, it's going to look weird. No, <laughs> this is so funny. This is so cool, right? You remember like the PS2 when if you, you can either have it vertically or horizontally, you can switch the little PlayStation logo around. That wasn't the first Sony product to do that. Check this out. Now, it doesn't have that satisfying click, but it is an actual option. When I first got these, the Sony logo was all crooked. And I'm like, what? And I looked in the instructions, and it is actually made to turn like that. So if it's on your shelf like this, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, obviously, this sticker's uh, on its side, and then this active speaker stuff is there. But the main purpose the sony logo can be rotated and then also there's these two little holes in the back in the bottom i think there might be like mounting points or something like that there's you know those are exposed the bottom is painted finished the same way as the other sides but you would remove these feet these little um, felt rubber feet there's these little caps in here and I'm sure you can pry them off. I'm not going to do that. But you pry those off and you stick them on the bottom. And it's like completely good to go if, if it's on its side. You can either have it vertically like this or horizontally. It's like they did think of everything. These really were the last set of bookshelf speakers that you should ever you should have ever bought. I really wish I knew the retail value of these when they first came out. They probably weren't cheap. They're, you can tell they're extremely well made. They're really heavy. And uh, they sound really good. But let's get to that. <laughs> You know, I mean, you can't really tell, but it sounds really good, um, especially considering how you know old they are and every everything like that. But a good set of speakers will last for you a long time if, as long as you take good care of them. So I plan on taking really good care of these and fixing anything. Um, it's kind of strange, and this came actually stock, but the inside where the speaker is is white, and inside of the middle is like a it's blatantly just styrofoam. I'm not really sure. <laughs> What that is, it doesn't look like it's supposed to be there. It looks like there should be like some kind of black centerpiece over it or something. But I looked online and every single example of these speakers had that same exact look. So I'm guessing it came like that. I don't know. Anyways, you know, what do you think? Could you survive with, if you just had one set of bookshelf speakers on a deserted island? Would these be them? Because it would be for me, I think. The only the only downside to these speakers that I can think of is there's no independent volume control. So if you hooked it up to like a, you know, like a, a turntable or something with no volume control, I don't know where the volume would be at. It would probably just be really low and it'd be stuck there. So you definitely uh, need something that has its own independent volume control. So, but other than that, these things are pretty solid. Um, but what do you think? Uh, do you think they're great? Do you think they're stupid? Do you think they look great? Do you think they look stupid? Let me know what you think. I think they're awesome. I got them for, I think, $20 uh, at Goodwill. Um, that, and they came with a really interesting carrying bag that does not did not go with them originally. Um, I'll show you a clip of that real quick, too, at the end of the video. Strange that they came in this bag, but... Hey, I think the bag's almost cooler than the speakers itself. You can see my reflection right there. Hi. Good thing I'm not naked, right? <laughs> uh, anyways, take it easy, guys, and we'll see you later. So this is the bag that these speakers came in. I originally saw this bag, and I saw, oh, it's Sony. That's weird. What's inside? So looking around, I said, oh, huh. Betamax, huh? So I'm like, there's probably a Betamax camcorder in here. 
I'm not really interested in that, but it's got the big It's a Sony logo. Sony. It almost looks and feels like a cooler, like a, a soft cooler, you know? It's got this cool little colored accent stripe here. So I opened it up, and inside were these speakers. It's a it's a perfect, actually, size carrying case for them. Yeah, I haven't cleaned it or anything yet, but the inside is like a very nice, soft, almost like felt, but sturdier feeling. It's got a pocket here. It's got these uh, dividers. Yeah, um, but... <laughs> Really cool. It's nice and soft and cushioned in here. You can, you know, you could definitely store these speakers in here and, and travel with them or whatever. But yeah, uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool though. I like the bag a lot. I might use it to travel or something with, but I don't want to get it messed up. But anyways, there it is. Check it out. Betamax carrying bag. Now is a Sony SRS 150 carrying bag.